out fishing that you want to know. Tune in, folks, cause this is the show. Show you all the right thing to use. So sit right back, you got love of the moves. Well, it doesn't really matter if it's out or cop. That it, my love, no gum be shot. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They talk about fishing till the cows come home. We're talking fishing. Uh, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing. Adam and Cara in the house and uh, welcome guys. We've had the Melbourne Cup break. We're back. Good to be back. It feels like Great. forever since we've been I here know. again. <laughs> it's just it's one weird. week off. I know, but it feels like a long time. So much has happened in that. Do you know what? There's been a lot of fishing happen between now and, and back then two weeks ago. Um, I, I guess because we're free. Yeah, so that's it. So everyone's allowed to go out. Everyone's yep. allowed to go to regional Victoria. Mm. You're already in. Oh, you're, already, you're already in. I'm regional, regional. but driving yeah. in today felt weird. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm going into the city, I'm going metro. <laughs> into the danger but zone. Yeah, it was. Right. I'm like, I don't think we've been this year at all. Like, no. it's just. No. Yeah, it's so it was nice. It's crazy. Nice hey, to be back. You're going to join us for the rest of the year, too, co hosting. Thank you. Because oh, people thank you. just drool over your dishes every week <laughs> in the cooking segment, but you're here to co host for the rest of the year. So, That's right. Um, and. We're going to pick your brain over the next seven weeks about native fish because you oh, live geez. in native <laughs> native fish country. You go fishing for them all the time in the Loddon and yep. and other places, and um, something no. we know stuff all Good about. Fun. So, yep. can I just? Did you two line up wardrobe colours tonight? Dave, I feel a bit. All I, all I can say is you're not a team player. Not, <laughs> the memo went out yeah. and got the old yes. checks. <laughs> um, big show coming up tonight. Big show, full of news, full of controversy, full of mailbag. Um, there's just so much going on. And yeah, of course, not, not to mention the list a mile long of Catch of the Week. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> the biggest Catch of the Week. Uh, in fact, let's get into it now. Uh, let's, have a look at, uh, let's have a look at what the people at home are catching. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Alrighty, let's get into it. And the first one, let's have a look at it because I can't quite see it on the screen. There you go, Paul Stevens, snapper off tortoise head. That's tortoise a head. lovely, fresh looking snapper, isn't it? It's a great fish. Mm. And isn't tortoise head a whiting mark? Well, <laughs> where yeah. is that? Where are we? Western Port. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, mighty Western yeah. Port. Mm. Uh, that's, that's a great fish. Um, They're slowly starting to pick up there. Yeah, they? absolutely. Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, Tom Reinard, he got a 5.6 kilo snapper off Lysarts. Lysarts, Thank your, you very favourite much. your favourite place, Dave, Lysarts. Yeah. Yep. It's almost as big as it. That is good. Now, I'll tell you what the next one, let's put the next one up. I got, I got a message. This is, this is about our, because this was a hotspot yes, two was. weeks ago. Yep. Uh, this one says Hi guys, take down Lysarts as a snapper hotspot and replace it as a whiting hotspot. <laughs> David Glennie has caught a bag of whiting over 40 centimetres there on Sunday and Monday. This one going 47 centimetres, thank you very much. Mm. He also says the Pippi crisis is solved. We're going to talk about that later Ooh, on, by the way. The West Australian version are doing just fine. So he's catching them on WA um, pip, uh, Pippi. So how yeah, is that? Because nice. you can't get Victoria and you can't get South Australian Pippi. So. <clears throat> That's not a good situation, hasn't got any better. No, but positive, but positive news that the alternative, the Western Australian cockle, which is a little bit more meat. Yeah. We don't like to accept. Looks different. We don't like to accept pippy imitations, Dave. People don't but like change. We might have like to. Change. Yeah, we might have to. Anyways. All right. Uh, the next one, look at this for a 1.3 kilo brim oh. off the Powlett River uh, by Young Angus. That's, that's a massive. cracking fish. Nice. And. Have a look at it on the scales. I mean, that's a genuine one point three zero eight. That is wow. a big fat brim. I, I like brim. Where's the Powlett River? You fished Powlett down there. Powlett Rivers, yeah. Well, on the way to, oh, it's one thaggy basically. Yeah. yeah. Do you fish down there? Kilcunda there. I do fish there a bit. Yeah. I do. It's not a not an easy fishery, but there's plenty of fish in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, have a look at. The, I, I love the kids that just send their photos in. And, and, and this is a great story. Will. Low writes to us, G'day, here is my nine-year-old daughter, Jana, with a 31 centimetre brim she caught in Turidan on Tuesday evening using pippies as bait. I don't know where you got your pippies. I'd like to know, <laughs> I wouldn't be wasting them on Will, where did you get your pippies from? Because we can't get them. Um, 
if you could write back to us, let us know where you got your pippies. <laughs> and uh, and what? You're wasting on Brian. Yeah. <laughs> um, she asked me to send the photo in. It would make her day if it catches mention on Talking Fishing. We don't just mention it, we put it on TV. We always watch the show together. As her dad, I'll give permission to show her photo. Well, bad luck we use it anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Too late now. Thank you from Will. So well done, Will uh, and well Jana. Done, love Jana. you. That's love fantastic. your little uh, Look at bit that of, smile. Yeah, bit of writing it. there. Um, yeah. All right. Let's go over to Port Phillip Bay and the snapper are going well off uh, Carum. Have a look at this one. Uh, Lee Cochran. They're nice. Not, you know, it doesn't matter how big they are. People, that's, people that's are excited by catching, uh, no, you know, good snapper. Technically, snapper. is that a pinky? What's the difference oh, with a what's pinky the and a snapper? Pinky? Oh, f what, 40 centimetres? I was going to say 30. Nah. No. If you called a 35, would you call it a pinky? pinky? Yeah. Which yeah. Yep. Harsh. Yep. I've certainly been in trouble here now. <laughs> no, definitely. No, it's, a, it's a pinky. A good point, though. Yeah, yeah, okay, pinky. Lovely pinky. I'll call it a snapper. Lee called it a snapper, so well done. Um, all right, let's go to the Werribee River. And uh, Roy Kasani, lovely 36 centimetre brim the, in the Werribee River. Snapper sorry. season what? The brim are dominating. I like know. It. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let's head down to Gippsland because... The That's brim are going well down there too. Have a look at this. Now this this is a special brim. John Roberts. River. It's a golden tag. Oh, hello. Now, well done. That only started up Friday oh, no. week ago, Just was it? Right yeah. Friday before weekend, the Melbourne Cup weekend. Yeah. So they, yep. they re when you were allowed to go to regional Victoria, they, yep, the I fisheries forgot. kick started golden tag. Six PM probably. Yeah. <laughs> who come up with that? <laughs> and um, I think John's one of four people who have caught nice. two thousand oh, fish since then. So uh, we'll talk a bit that's more a about too. golden tag later on. So so that's John's. Now have a look at the next one. Um, Nikki Bryant, forty-two centimetre estuary perch from Lake Tyres. That's a cracker. Beautiful. Lake Tyres estuary me. perch. Mm. Wait, that's till, wait, till see, wait till you see the next Isn't one. There? Wait, this is the next one. Nikki's husband, Blair. Oh, oh stop it. 84 <laughs> centimetre dusky flathead from Lake Tyres. Holy now, moly. Now, can I just say, those, I think, yeah, obviously Blair and Nikki are related. If you go back to the last two catch of the week, so I reckon, have a look at this. I reckon they're related as oh, well. Stop it. <laughs> oh, no, one's at Werribee and one's at, where was it? Bem. But I reckon those two blokes might be husband, husband and wife as well. Because they've got matching hats. Know, matching hats, <laughs> matching fish. I think you've got too much time on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I reckon that's husband and wife, definitely. So, yeah. all right, let's continue on with Lake Tyres because people that are going down there, the entrance is open, yeah. so it's tidal. But they're saying that the fishing is nuts. I was going to say, from what I understand, the flathead fishing in particular has picked up huge yeah. in the last week and a half. Well, when you crack a metre, oh. you'd be pretty happy. Have a look at this 102 centimetres oh of dusty God. flathead by Peter Brook. Jeez, they're special, those big flatties. Yeah. They, look, they almost look not real, don't they? Mm. Crazy. Now, oh, it's going to come up in Fisheries News, actually. Um, Eildon Pondage. Always a special place. Yeah. Do, do you know the one thing I like about Eildon Pondage is when the Browns come out of there, they always look different. Like yeah. They look. They are they are they brood stock? Are they the best looking fish like that you could get in New Zealand? Well, have a look at this. Oh look at oh, that! Wow. The colours in that. Yeah. The spots. The. I mean, that is a beautiful it looking looks fish. Fake, doesn't it? Yeah. Incredible. Those markings are like insane, leopard. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it looks and that'd be a brood stock from... Yeah, from that's stock. right. Yeah. It's a beautiful looking fish. That'd be the one you want to mount. I love brown trout. Yeah, yeah, there's something about them. Yeah. Everyone's different, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right, lucky last. Um, we're getting in trouble because we're going over time, but David Harrison, have a look at this. Only a little red fin, but that was oh, David's nice. first ever fish. Nice. Oh, good <coughs> to job. Melton Reservoir, well done. Yep, and Dave's now officially now? hooked on fishing for life because that's yeah. how it starts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly That's is. great. Good on you, Dave. Seen a few more out of Melton Res too. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you the what? last couple of weeks, Melton Res. Yeah, pulling out a few fish. So is that predominantly a ready fishery? Um, I don't know too much about it, but yeah. I know a few yellows have come out lately. Oh and nice, okay. mm. nice. Yeah. If you'd like to send in a pic of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at Go on! Yeah, I wanna go fishing. And coming up, fisheries news, including a new way to report your lobster catch, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We 
know what you'd rather be doing We know what you really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wear the line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Cara and Adam in the studio, and uh, plenty of news, guys. That's some good news. I think it's all good news, actually. Um, Let's kick it off with the first one. Rock Lobster Program Goes Digital is the headline. So this is a new way to report your rock lo lo lobster catch. Okay. If you remember back a few years ago, um, in fact, it was Fisheries News, they introduced a hard tagging. So you had to apply for tags. You got tags sent to your house. You had to tag your lobster. It's now going digital. Let me tell you about it. Victoria's Recreational Rock Lobster Tagging Program is going digital, making reporting catches even easier for fishers and reducing the environmental footprint on the, of the program by removing plastic tags. The program has been very successful with more than 12,000 fishers registering for rock lobster tagging accounts and information provided on over 23,000 catches since it started, said Travis Dowling. It's 23,000, that's good. Yeah. And it's good, it's, it's good data for a very you know, expensive yeah. sort of fishery, I guess, so or high value mm. fishery. Um, in recognising the value of the catch information provided by thousands of fishers, it's important to keep the program going and make it even more relevant and accessible. So we're utilising the Go Fish Vic app to record catch data in the future and streamline the process for fishers by eliminating plastic tags. Go Fish Vic features terrific benefits for fishers, including the ability to report catch of all species, add photos, Share catch, fish, uh, fair, share catch information via social media, view personal catch statistics and receive fishing news updates. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, reporting is easy and we encourage fishers to get into the habit of reporting their catch as soon as possible. Simply start a new trip in the app, add your catch details, allocate a digital tag, finish your trip and have fun enjoying this brilliant fishery. Fishers will need to report their rock lobster catch within seven days and register the intent to be active for each season via the Go Fish Vic app prior to targeting rock lobster. The requirement to tail punch rock, rock, rock lobsters remains unchanged as do the size limits, bag limits and possession limits. The new reporting platform was made available on 15th of September and fishers can start reporting their catch from season opening on the 16th of November 2021. Um, you guys ever reported your catch on that app? I do use that app. Do you? When I remember, that's that's the but trouble. Do you, yeah. do you use it to report your catch? Yeah, I've uploaded. I've yeah. uploaded all the yeah, especially when we're out cod fishing and that sort of thing. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting. It's Cause very easy to use. Yeah. And because a, it helps fisheries. Yeah. Kind of get some data on ret fishing. Yep. Yep. But the other is, it's 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 almost like keeping a diary, but you're using their yep. app to do it, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. No, I don't think the I've information gets shared out, so it's not like you know your yeah. little secret fishing spots are going to be. Shared well, I reckon when interesting. It, I'm going to muck around with that. That's like pretty mm, cool. Maybe thing. 18 months ago, I started a fishing session. I never ended it, so they probably think I'm You're still out. <laughs> been fishing for 18 months straight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it hasn't anyway. uploaded, it hasn't caught anything in that time. Reflects his abilities. <laughs> the, 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 wor the worst fisherman in the world. <laughs> haven't caught anything in 18 months. All right, uh, next one. Volunteers sought for fishing licence advisory committee is the headline. The Victorian Fisheries Authority is seeking nominations for keen, from keen wreck fishers to join an advisory committee that provides advice to government on how best to spend fishing licence fees. The Victorian Fisheries Authority's CEO, Travis Dowling, said the Rec Fishing Licence Trust Advisory Committee consists of eight recreational fishers and an independent chairperson appointed for a three-year term, who collectively bring together a diverse range of fishing knowledge and experience from across the state. The committee review and prioritise project submissions from fishing clubs, community groups, councils and government agencies. We are looking for grassroots fishers with a range of skills and ideas to provide advice on the best projects that will lead to even better freshwater and saltwater fisheries in Victoria. And the details are on your screen. Nominations for the advisory committee 
close on the 21st of November, so you've still got a couple of weeks, if that. Uh, and for an expression of interest form or to understand more, contract, contact Andrew at the Reading Group. And there's his details up on the screen if you want to be part of that. Get on the VFA website or social media, all those details are up there as well. So good little committee there. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, did, I did a three-year term on that many, many years yeah, ago in the early days. Chance to be a part of the industry and have a say yes. and, and, and enforce some positive change yeah. and well, positive allocation on yeah, how that yeah. money will be spent. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, and some of those committees are really rewarding. I mean, you and I both sit on the Snobs oh, Creek. Yeah. What you learn. It's good, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No, you just and as wreck fishing to see where it is. You know what your licences do give and yeah. provide, and have a bit of a say in how it's run, and that's Definitely. from a public perspective. Yeah. And yep. a lot of licence money is invested in stocking. Mm. So, all right, the next one. Have a look at the photo of this. In fact, we probably could have used the the oh, capture. Yeah. But there's yeah. another one. The VFA. This is from last Thursday. The, the VFA stocking team isn't slowing down. Last Thursday, they released 100 ex broodstock browns into Eild and Pondage. Some of them up to three and a half kilos. Um, the Pondage is a great spot to try all year round if you're chasing big rainbows or browns and if you don't land your own big brown Adam this might be for you if you don't catch a fish there <laughs> just around the corner is the Snobs Creek hatchery stop out the front and you can snap a selfie with our huge brown trout and trout cod. oh there we go I'll have you ever seen you haven't I'll seen them have you uh, they're monsters no. aren't they Cara <laughs> what is it great big statues oh, one okay. of a brown Ooh. trout and one of a trout cod in fact, it's the only trout cod statue in the no, world. No, I did see these when they first put them up. We had them on the we show. We had them on the show. Yeah. We did. <coughs> There's plenty uh, more fish headed for the pondage in coming months, including hundreds more ex broodstock browns and lots of bows, including stonkers. There you go. Ooh, stonkers. Oh, All stonkers right. are fun to catch. Another golden tag. Have a look at this brim. I think it was a brim. Yep, yeah, it's a brim. <laughs> this is winner 114. Now, most of those have won two grand, Yep. some of them have won ten grand. Wow. Uh, and Stephen caught this one, uh, he's a Gippsland Lakes local and loves fishing for black brim in the region's waters. He knew all about the Golden Tag competition but was still excited to call it in and learned he'd won two grand. I often head out, nice. this is what he said, I often head out fishing with my wife but she doesn't but she wasn't with me that day. She wishes she was, though, because <laughs> she said she would have claimed the fish was on her Half rod. the rights to the money. Yeah. I couldn't believe my luck. I never win anything, so this was so exciting for me. Stephen landed the brim in the north arm of the lake system on a fresh prawn. Nice. While he doesn't know what he will spend the winnings on just yet, he does know he will keep on fishing. Well done. Um, and the Golden Tag competition runs till the end of the year, so... There you go. Mm, still time. That's fisheries news. Yeah, I imagine Christmas time. Like, oh. well, you can't you can't get in anyway. People are going to be sleeping in their cars, aren't they? That's all right. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, I'm just going to update the pippy fishery. We talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's it's in dire straits, and, mm -hmm. I, and it, the more I dig, the more <laughs> I find. Right, and it's and it's not good news. So. Regardless, like South Australia, we talked about that, 200 tonne cut to their quota. Yep. Um, two years in a row now, so there's just nothing going to the bait industry. But what's happened in Victoria, six licence holders can fish Portland, which out of the 52 tonne of quota in Victoria, 50 tonne comes from, well, Discovery Bay, a little bit west yep. Of, yep. of Portland. And what's been happening from what I've been able to establish is that that pippy fishery has only been around since 2012. So it's not like it hasn't been going for 100 years. Mm. But since 2012, right, they need, the, I think the shortest distance to the public road or public car park is about 800 metres. No one can carry a 20 kilo sack of pippies, let alone, you know, 50 sacks of them yeah, in a day, right. back up to, to their truck to cart them, to process them. So they use a quad bike or they use a four wheel drive down mm -hmm. to the beach, right? From what I can gather, they've been fined lots of times, you know, and, and I think I'm reading into this, so don't... <laughs> yeah. um, from what I can gather, I reckon they, they just see the fine as a cost of business. Mm. You know, so you get fined, OK, you know, There's pay the thing. fine or whatever. It went to court. That's complicated things because uh, three of the guys that got went to court and, and they pleaded guilty because, yeah, because technically... Well, the technicality is that you're not allowed to drive your boat, uh, your, your quad bikes or your four wheel drives on the beach unless you have permission from parks. Parks wouldn't give them permission. You know, the, the really complicated thing, and this really annoys me, is that in 2018, 
the Victorian Fisheries Authority wrote a PIPI management plan. Jala Pulford, the minister at the time, made a statement in that fisheries man uh, in the in the PIPI management plan that Victorian PIPIs should be available to Victorian consumers. And then there's some things in there about access, and they recognised that driving on the beach was an environmental concern. However, they also recognised in the PIPI management plan that it's it's mitigated because there's only a certain amount of small, a small number of fishes that mm. go fishing there. Yeah. Six. Yeah. So it's kind of mitigated. It's also, you know, um, I mean, there is claims of concerns about um, birds that nest on the sand yeah. or on the tracks. There's also concerns about cultural heritage things. Mm. But if there was any concern from a, from a cultural heritage point of view, then Parks Victoria wouldn't be driving on that very same track. I was about to ask that exact question, Dave. The, they the drive on it every day to so go down the beach. So there's two tracks that give direct access to yep. the beach, correct? Yeah. If they're worried about that or running over a bird's nest... Parks wouldn't be driving on it. Mm. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I'm pretty sure that's a well-known uh, saying. So, so what we've got now is the... And, and particularly two guys are the main fishers, right? They're on a good behaviour bond, right? So they break that good behaviour bond by riding their quad bike or their four drive onto the beach. Then they go. They yeah. really go. Yeah. Right. But the magistrate said to them, "You're on a good behaviour bond until Parks give you permission." Oh. Well, guess what? Parks won't give <laughs> them permission. Give permission. So we're at a stalemate now, yeah. and they've shut down the pippy industry in Victoria. Mm. It's got to be worth at least five million dollars and twenty jobs gone because Parks won't give permission for six guys to drive down to the beach like they have since 2012. To use an existing track, and not carve their own path. No, and for the first time in my living memory, Victorian bait and tackle shops have run out of pippies. Yeah. The number one selling bait yep. in ta bait and tackle shops, gone, finished, uh, all because of Parks Victoria. It's not good enough. Parks need to have a, a fair income look <clears throat> at what Jala Pulford said in the pippy management plan and open up that access, give them permission because Victorians deserve to be able to have access to the resource of pippies in Victoria. There you go. Coming up next, product of the week. And Cara heads into the kitchen. Yes, I haven't I seen do. what you're cooking this week, oh, but well, I'm looking forward to what it. A surprise. That's <laughs> next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking Now for product of the week this week, possibly my favourite product of the week we've ever done. Oh, Whoa. Big, call. big call. And I'm going to tell you why. We are looking at a new reel, it's the 2021 NASCI. I'm not going to bore you with all of the little ins and outs on what makes it a NASCI, but I can tell you that all of the technology it's taken from the reels above in the range, mm -hmm. like the Stratic, has now been incorporated into this reel and I'm going to go on record by saying I've been in this industry a long time. I've never ever seen a reel this good for under $200. Wow. That's impressive. It is insane. Cara, have a look at that. You've got the 4000 there. I've got the 2500 Now, Jeez. one thing we've seen creep up quite a lot, Dave, in the last few years is the introduction of a 5000 size reel. Mm. We were a little bit unsure about it when it came in. It didn't seem too much different to say a 4000, but it's established itself as a Port Phillip Bay snapper reel, especially now with graphite rods becoming so prominent in the bait fishing scene as well. Nasky does that. So a 1000 for the trout and brim fishermen, all the way through to a 5000, so your light salt water, cod. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I- Sorry, only, only up to a 4000. No, right? up to a 5000, so there is a 5000 as well. Dave, oh, 
I, I honestly don't know what to say about these reels. It's, they are that it's good. smooth. So they feel straight out of the box. They feel every bit as good as a Stratic. Yeah. Now they're not feather light and they're not supposed to no. be. Mm. But do you know, they actually feel solid. Nice one, They do, yeah. They actually feel like a really solid reel, yeah. don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. So a, a couple of the main upgrades from the previous model of Nasty, which was also quite popular, is the saltwater guards now, well, it's modern. Yeah. It's the same as what the Stratic shares. Um, silent drive, these are the, like I said, these are the smoothest $200 really yeah. of the line of life. Yeah. And one sneaky factor that I really like that doesn't get enough airplay, it's a direct drive handle. So that handle winds directly into the body. It's not supported by the pin coming from the side. Oh, yeah. So over time, that sloppy little bit of play mm. that you get through some of the reels that are supported mm. by the pin, completely gone. Mm. These are incredible. Yeah. Like they, they feel every bit of a reel that's three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars. They sit so the five thousand being the dearest in the range still sits under two hundred dollars. Dave, they are incredible. I'm yeah. so impressed. The, how, the many, how many bearings? So five plus one, so faint, uh, five bearings plus the roller bearing. Yeah. They still pull in, I think a 2500's pulling eleven kilos of drag or Serious? something crazy like that. Which Drag pressure, this is another success story in the technology in fishing. 10 plus kilos for a 2500 size reel is the mm. standard. It is the yeah. industry standard. You'll yeah. never ever need that much drag in a reel that size, mm. but it can do it. Mm. So basically that means, to put it into perspective on what we would use it for in an everyday scenario, you're bouncing around for yellows, yep. or you're bouncing around for pinkies. I'll tell you what I hooked up on the other day and I couldn't stop. A, a, an absolute dinosaur of a cuttlefish, cuttlefish. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of tentacle back. This thing was taking line, I could yep. not get it yeah. off the yeah. bottom. But if you're bumping around for pins... I needed it, that 10 kilo well, or 11 did. kilo <laughs> drag. Yeah. If you hook a three and a half kilo snapper, which happens yeah. regularly bouncing yeah. around for pinkies, or you catch a cod mm. while you're fishing for yellows, that reel is mm. just going to eat it up and yeah. go, yeah, this is yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Nasky, mm. they are in stores now. Just look at them. Go they're down to your local, fun, eh? go yeah. down to your local, have a wind, have a good look. I said, I've never, ever in my history of being in the tackle industry, I've never seen a $200 reel that I believe is that good. Yeah. That's a great price point. Yeah. yeah. I do owe my husband one. I might have. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, come on, what'd you do? Tell the story. Oh, I may have slipped down an embankment and landed on the rod and Kind oh. of bent the reel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kari, you fish a lot on the Loddon River. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the Loddon River. I mean, how big is it and what, what, what's uh, the so species? What are we you? sort of head towards Bridgewater yep. on the Loddon um, and it stretches right down to Laren Koori. Yep. Um, it's a decent bit of river. Like how wide? Oh, I probably near on 100 metres wide, I suppose. So it's a big river. Yeah, yeah. It's a big yeah. river. Um, in town, there's like quite a large ski run as well. Mm. Um, but if you go further out, it sort of does narrow in and you get little pockets and, yeah. um, but beautiful spot to fish. So if it's a ski run, there wouldn't be a lot of timber or structure that you could run into. Not but, in that But when you get out of it, is section, it? But yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and then probably upstream's probably the nicest spot to sort of head yeah. to fish. And but easy to navigate? Oh, very. Like you go for yep. miles on the river? Or? Uh, you, you can, like you will, you know, we've got a sm smaller boat, but yep. you wouldn't take anything too big on there because you will come across little areas to sort yep. of sneak through. But yeah. Yeah. Um, there's lots of boat ramps, so to put your boat in, you can still have a fantastic yeah. day out there. Yeah, I've yeah. never been up that way. Me either. Ever. Oh, it's, just, it's beautiful. In fact, I still don't yeah. know what you're talking yeah. about. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we, yeah, we were chatting about this before the show. Yeah. I like half of these places you just said I've never heard of before. Yeah. Yeah. It's somewhere <laughs> between Melbourne and Swan Hill, isn't it? Oh, uh, no more Bendigo. <laughs> 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 Not far from Bendigo. So if you're heading from okay. Melbourne, out on the Calder Freeway. But this side of Bendigo? This side, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So. Mm. I would have, I would have said so there was little streams up trip. there, but not oh, a river no, it's not 100 metres wide. Yeah. So. There's no. so much water in this state. Wow. Yeah, good cod out of there, yellows, yeah. reddies. There you, go. Mm. you know what it's time for? It's my, time for your yes. segment. <laughs> I'll just duck into the kitchen. My, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cara's going to head into the kitchen. Let's have a look at what's been cooked up this week. I have got some lovely rockling fillets today. The recipe I have created is going to showcase this fish beautifully. Using some beautiful fresh thyme, we are going to make a mustard and herb crusted ling. 
To get started, we're going to make our own breadcrumbs. So I've got this beautiful ciabatta roll and I've blipped it into a food processor to get this lovely, nice and coarse crumb. You can substitute this for panko crumbs if you don't want to make your own. I'm going to add in some Parmesan cheese that's been grated. In with our thyme, I've picked the leaves off. We're going to zest half of a lemon and add this. And then finally in with some olive oil. Now we're going to mix this through and allow the breadcrumbs to absorb all of the oil. So we'll let it sit just for a little while before we coat our fish. This is where we get to have a little bit of fun with this dish. So with our fillets, we want to make sure that they're placed skin side down. And we're going to spread a very thin layer of some Dijon mustard on top of our fish here. We want a fairly nice, even coating. And this is going to allow our crumb mix to stick to it. Next, we are going to place our fish mustard side down into our crumb mix very carefully. Press that down. We want to have a really nice, thick and even coating. Now you'll notice we're only doing one side of the fish here. So this is exactly what we're wanting it to look like. It smells beautiful. Beautiful herbs coming through. So we can just top these off with a little bit extra and then we can cook these. There are a couple of options when it comes to cooking the fish. You can put this straight into a hot oven, 180 degrees, and it will take 10 to 12 minutes to cook. Alternatively, we can brown off the base first, which is what I'm going to do, and then transfer it into the oven. So a little splash of olive oil, and then carefully transfer our fish onto the hot pan. A quick season of salt and pepper. And then we'll let the base brown and then we'll transfer it into an oven. The bottom has been browning for two minutes. So we're going to pop it into the oven. This handy little combo will act as an oven. So I'm just going to close the lid. But for you at home, just place this into the oven. And this will only need a further 10 minutes. Our fish is cooked and it is gorgeous. Golden, crunchy, brown on top. To serve this, I've got some beautiful fresh asparagus here, which I've just charred. And we'll place our fish on top. You can finish that off with any dressing of your choice and some fresh lemon. Until next week, happy cooking. Oh, I've got two questions. <laughs> <laughs> two questions. Here we go. Um, to both of you, is, is it not the best time of year to have asparagus? Oh, well, cause I it's love all fresh I love now. Asparagus. Yeah. So do I. Fresh. But I've got a question for you, Adam. And yeah. I, I don't mean to uh, say or try and portray that you're lazy or anything right <laughs> no. have you ever made breadcrumbs never no oh. no never no, they, <laughs> you just buy them in hey, a david, packet david you do buy I, them in a packet do i do i own a food processor oh come on <laughs> <laughs> no, learned... stale bread, leftover bread, fantastic. I've never made bread comes in my life, but uh, I, I have been using next level. Dijon, what is it? Dijon, Dijon mustard. Dijon. Yeah, I'll use, yeah, I'll use that a bit. You know what I'm doing? I'm making my own coleslaw at the moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. where I've used it as well. Yeah, yeah a bit of mayo. It. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm not going to give away my age because I'm old, but it's the first time in many years that I've, or in, in my lifetime that I've ever bought it's really Dijon good, isn't mustard. It? It's really good in like a not bad. It's a yeah. French mustard. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That is an impressive dish. That was, good. That was easy. Well I done. was critiqued by two 10 year olds too. I felt like <laughs> I was, was being critics. judged by MasterChef. Yeah. It was, yeah. I actually feel a bit funny that we had a palmer for dinner. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. before we anyway. Coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag. Plenty more to come on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today.
Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Cara's in the house with us for the rest of the year, Cara. So looking forward yeah. to all your talks about, particularly native fish, because we know stuff yeah. all about them. <laughs> there you go. It's all good. Um, if you ever see a picture and you go, that's either fake or if that's real, my head's going to fall off. Oh, it's going to be awesome to show the picture. It's, 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 <laughs> I, the sad thing is I actually think this is real. Oh. Um, and, and this is the mail that we got. Uh, Dear Mr. Kramer, so he's wrote, wrote to my dad. It's official. Yep. Um, <laughs> as an avid follower of the show and a land-based angler, this was the Mordialic Madness last Sunday Arvo. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. uh, last Sunday, Arvo, I've heard th three before. guys, 23 rods. I observed them for an hour. Um, There's a couple of things I can't say on here. Uh, that's okay. The point here is that you had Vic Fisheries on the show. Great for the viewers. Could you please address this to them as we need more policing and inspectors to check people? The pick speaks for itself um, from a 40-year-old fisherman, JD. Thank you. I'll always be watching and supporting your show. Cheers. JD, thanks for sending the photos. 23 rods. Dave, it looks like, we're, it looks like we're setting up for a tackle show there. That's taking the <laughs> mickey, surely. Yeah. How? I mean, everyone knows the one three fish number, don't they? Uh, when you've called it, like, like. And by the look of the show, by the look not. of the background, it wasn't the calmest day ever, which is prime snapper for yeah. water up here. How do I, they not have tangles? I hope that dude well, got I the know. biggest tangle of all time. Or I hope you one banjo that took out every one. Yeah, pretty. Well, I think no, that's, that's real. That's that's yeah, that's, that's not cool. Real. Yeah. Um, now this was from a couple of weeks ago. Phil wrote in, "Hi Kramer and team, love your show." How, how do I find out how high is the footbridge from the water at the Governor Road boat oh, ramp in Morty Alec? Yep. Uh, not sure if I'll make it under the footbridge with my boat and my canopy up and my rocket launchers. Now, um, Travis was on the show two yep. weeks ago and he said he was sending Catherine out because the, the high tide was four o'clock in the morning. That's so right. she had to go straight to bed, get down to Morty Alec by 3 a.m., get launched by, and oh, measure wow. it at four o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yep. Well. Now, now it's not only the footbridge. Have a look at um, we've got a map here. So you've got on on your right hand side of your screen, that's the footbridge near the boat ramp. Then you've got the dual bridge of the railway crossing. Mm. Yep. And then you've got Nepean Highway Bridge. All right. So there's actually three bridges now. Um, Catherine writes, following uh, the query about Nepean Highway um, bridge and clearance. Well, there's the other ones too. Um, but I think the Pean Highway is the least, the highest, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's called HAT, Highest Astronomical Tide. So at the very highest tide, there's only 1.6 metres clearance. Oh, wow. <laughs> you wouldn't even get your no. tinny under Nah, I'll leave your big boat at Jeez, you'd, be, you'd lose your rod tips on that. Yeah. yeah. You wow. certainly wouldn't have your canopy in a rod <laughs> no, no. and your rocket launches <laughs> up, I can <laughs> tell you. So the Nepean Bridge quickly turned into the Montague Street Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, yeah. Um, um, great My duck's coming under that today. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> great info from Catherine, I'll tell you, on that one. Um, all right, Snapper Comp coming up in yes. Geelong. Ads, tell us all about it. Dave, it is the season for the Snapper Competition and the Geelong and Ballerine Snapper Classic is on Friday the 19th to Sunday the 21st of November, as you can see on your screen now. Over $16,500 in prizes. Jump onto leopoldaac.com to register. Uh, as you can see there, uh, junior prizes, adult prizes. There's multiple mystery and door prizes, so you don't even need to catch a fish to win a prize. Uh, I think that is going to be a little bit of a success, Dave. Yeah. Mm. Uh, good, to, good to see that happening in COVID. Yeah. But there's also another one, a regular one. Kari, you got all the details? Yes, I have for those on the peninsula. Uh, so Western Port and Port Phillip Bay, the Peninsula Snapper Challenge for 2021. So it's known as Melbourne's premier snapper fishing event. Uh, nine days of fishing. How good is that? That's an epic call. When are you meant to sleep? Well, you there don't. might be. There <laughs> might be <laughs> and there might be eight days of wind knowing this time of year. Yeah, that's right. So you might get one day of yeah, fishing yeah. in. Uh, so November the 20th through to Sunday the 28th. Uh, lots of prizes, over $20,000 worth. Uh, one in five entrants will win a lucky draw prize. 
um, open kayak and junior divisions. So there you go. I, I think a kayak will win it this year, Dave. Why, why, why wouldn't they be charging kayaks more than the normal boat owners? Because well, of the inconvenience of having them on the water. <laughs> oh, no, we, that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll all wave to everyone lining up for three and a half hours to get in a boat ramp as we just slide oh. it in off the beach. <laughs> so, Bing. for more information on that one, it's www.peninsulasnapperchallenge.com. There you go. Thanks, Cara. All right. Um, uh, complaints department for boat ramps. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Hi Kramer, this is from Kerry. Hoping you can help with some information regarding the Ocean Grove pontoon, which was removed over 12 months ago due to damage. Originally it was expected to be replaced within six months and still there has been no action. Can you chase it up please as we're going to be in to another fishing season soon without the pontoon. Now that gets worse because we got another one from Peter who is now saying that the other pontoon is now damaged in the storms. <laughs> so there's it's both crazy. pontoons are gone. Uh, again, and, and now, and this is, I'm, I'm going to defend Better Boat in Victoria here because, um, and we were talking about this earlier on, mm. Cara, yeah. is, is that Better Boating Victoria at the moment, and it's got to change, but mm. you know, it's going to take some, some decision making, I guess, to change. But at the moment, they are the funders, okay? So they have the Better Boating Fund, they fund the boat ramp managers to make uh, improvements or fix things yep. or whatever. So they're not actually, they're not the ones doing the work. No, they're they the allow the projects to happen. The work. Mm -hmm. So have a listen to this. The pontoons are an asset managed by the city of Greater Geelong. Better Boating Victoria provided the city of Greater Geelong $20,000 in February 2021 and a further $28,000 in June of 2021 to undertake the design works to replace the southern pontoon at Ocean Grove. All up, they've already received $48,000, part in February, part in June. The expectation was the design works would be tended for and the new pontoon installed in advance of summer, uh, which <laughs> is on our doorstep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Better Boating Victoria has allocated up to $250,000 for a new pontoon at Ocean Grove. We've been waiting for the City of Greater Geelong to progress this project and doing what we can to encourage them to deliver for the benefits of boaters. Unfortunately, this is from Better Boating Victoria, unfortunately, the City of Greater uh, Geelong needs to deliver this pontoon and now work out what repairs are required for the second pontoon, which was severely damaged by the storms over a week ago. This is a requirement of asset managers that they maintain and manage their assets. And Better Boating can only suggest that you take up your concern with the city of Greater Geelong because they just can't do any more. They've given them the money. They've got the money in the bank waiting to actually do the job. Dave, it sounds to me know. like someone spent the money on something else. I don't know. Probably the big Christmas tree that goes what on the What have they done? What have they done? I'm going to run out of time because I've got one more. I want to talk about it later on, maybe yep. after the break. But yep. if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, PO Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. All right, coming up next, the all-important hotspots. And I do want to try and talk about Queenscliff because... Yep. Um, I don't know. Are they keyboard warriors? I don't know. There's just a bit going on down there. Okay. Yeah, a bit, little bit of noise. But anyway, coming up next, the all-important hotspots next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities, including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. 
And welcome back to Talking Fishing. All right, let's get into the hot spot straight away. And the first one, if you're after, not a pinky, something bigger than 40 <laughs> centimetres, Adam. In a kayak. In a kayak, get to black. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, this is a great spot because you don't have to go too far offshore. That's black right. rock, snapper. Get there early in the morning yep. is, is the best time. Like, get there Definitely. just at, before the sun's up. Black Rock, they're in nice and close there, and it's a great spot. There'll be some big fish come out of there this weekend. Yeah, I, reckon, I agree. So. I think it's, a, yeah, it's yep. been fishing. Really um, the other one, people, for, I think people forget, or they don't talk about it often enough, is those artificial reefs that were sunk yeah, along yeah. Edith Vale, I think it was Edith Vale, Aspendale, or Seaford, yep. and Frankston. Frankston, just off the pier. And Frankston was called, was that one called Yak Reef? Yakka. There was Yakka, Yakka Reef, Tedesco, Tedesco, and it's another one. What was the other one? People have forgotten about them. Mm. But I'm telling you, that one off Frankston, and I, there's been seven, eight kilo fish caught off that. Yep. Get to the Frankston Reef. It's, and they're, uh, they're well established now too. They've been here for quite a oh few yeah, years. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're going to be good. Um, all right. Over... <laughs> David Glennie's not going to like this. Over in, we <laughs> over in Western Port, Lysart's Snapper. There you go. No, he'll be right. You said Snapper, not Whitey. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'll tell you where... I'll tell you what, old Steve Johnson's been telling us. Ah. The top end of Middle Spit, King George Whiting everywhere. Yeah, Big the, ones the too. The Whiting are in trouble now that Stevie Johnson's back. Yeah, on the find the deeper water up that top end too. That's where the bigger fish are sitting. So, um, and like we saw, David Glenn, 47. That's a, seven, that's seven, a big whiting. There are some big whiting in big Western Port at the moment. Yep. So, um, we won't get to see if the one kilo fish gets caught this year because the no. uh, whiting challenge, the Western Port whiting challenge. I'll put money on it so someone catches a one it's, kilo fish on that day. Yeah, it's <laughs> a pity it's not on. Money. It's not on. But anyway. All right, let's get up to the regions. And if you are bored this weekend or want to avoid the million people are going shopping, <laughs> there is no better time, I tell you, no better time than to get up to the Eildon Pondage for a brown trout. Get up there. Yeah. It's, you've been up there, Cara? Oh, we oh, love I mean, you've been to Snobs Creek, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, and we fish along the Acheron as well. And yeah. It's a uh, beautiful spot. That's right. You, you were allowed to go stonker fishing on trout. We may have yeah. been oh, allowed yeah. to go. Yeah, we did okay. The kids both caught one. And yeah, you made all of day, Melbourne jealous. We, <laughs> had we might photos. have been the whole family cleaned <laughs> up. <laughs> I think it's nan. awesome. <laughs> I'm not saying we're desperate for photos then because we were in lockdown, but... I think catch of the week one, two, three, four, and five was all your family. It might have been. Oh dear. All right. And uh, oh, yeah, lucky last, I'll tell you what, get down there before the tourists are, are smashing it. Lake Tyres, yep. big duskies is the last one. Um, yeah, you've got to get down there now because yes. a million people will descend on there at, oh, the end, Christmas. at Christmas time. Mm. And I'm not saying it's not fishable then, because it'll be fantastic, yeah, but it's um, if you want a little bit of peace and quiet, get to Lake Tyres now. It's a great time to be out there. Entrance is still open. Um, we're not sure for how long. Um, it's just our, our, our roving reporter down there, Brett Geddes, who <laughs> he joins us on 3MP every Saturday morning. Yep. We should give that plug uh, plug for the radio yep. show. But 3MP Saturday mornings, um, talking fishing on 3MP. There you go. We've got the, got the slide up there. Yeah. Um, Brett Geddes is on it every week, and he gives us an update every week, virtually on Lake Tyres. Mm. Entrance is open looking nice and wide yes but at some stage when the rain stops and I, I think we've got, if it stops we've got more coming this week I think. 13 degrees yeah, today, today was the nice day and it's yeah. just downhill yeah that'll stay open for a little bit longer but I reckon by Christmas maybe closed yeah, yeah. So, and anyway, anyway, it's been open long enough and they say and I don't I don't know how they know but they say they, they. Uh, <laughs> that there'll be a natural recruitment of prawns into Lake Ties because oh. it's open now. Oh, nice. We need it to close then so they stay in there. I know. Mm. I know. That's all the good. The prawns at Meetung too. All right. Yes. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's a hot spot. I'm going to quickly mention this, although I don't. I just, Ugh. I'm struggling to understand. Don't do it. Yep. Queen's Cliff Boat. Well, there's just, <laughs> there's all the, there's this little bit of noise, a little group. And, and they, they, what they're saying is that they've stuffed up the car park. But they've stuffed up the overflow car park. Now, I, I, I want to mention Better, Vic, Better Boat in Victoria again because it's they think them. they've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. right? The overflow car park was just like a paddock. Okay? It could have been used for other things, like if a market wanted to be set up or um, the railway people, they use a lot of the land around there. Mm. Uh, the Better Boat in Victoria have actually marked it all out, but they've had to do it in an environmentally friendly way. So I think it's got like pavers down, but the the water flows through it and all that. I, I haven't seen it, no. but they've marked it out and they're saying that it is now formalised as an overflow car park, whereas before it was just a however you fit, you fit, first in, best dressed. Um, they've formalised it. Now, Better Bone Victoria have also written a 
I guess, a standard on how to build boat ramps and what are the important features of a boat ramp. And they have, um, don't quote me on this. In fact, it might be in here. Yeah. The, oh, here it is here. The new overflow car park provides an additional 33 car and trailer unit parking bays, of which 19 of them are 13 metre bays, 11 of them, 11 of them are 12.5 metre bays, and three of them are 12 metre bays. The existing car park, when upgraded next year, will include a, a further six 15 and a half metre bays. Now, I think people are concerned that big boats, big cars won't mm. fit in them. I think the, the standard is 12 metres. So they're actually got quite a few that are above that 12 metres. We need to, next time a boat and car pulls up at the front of the shop ads, measure step, it we need to take, want to take a tape measure out mm. and measure it. But mm. because I think, that, I mean, People, people are easy to throw mud when they're seeing something built and they don't mm. like it. And I've got to say, over Melbourne Cup weekend, the, the borough of, of Queenscliff, the local council, they shut the car park. Like, how oh. stupid. What was the point of that? Uh, well, it wasn't finished oh, okay. and they could have removed all the barriers, but they said all the people were too busy cutting down trees that fell down or something. Oh. Mm. So they didn't open it. For, like, that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah that um, is. That's not better boating. That's the borough of Queenscliff. So mm. um, it, it says in here, in a nutshell, while some users are not happy with the formalisation of the car park, I imagine they would be more upset if the area was taken up by another use in the future and not available for any car trailer parking. So there you go. Okay, well I'm um, still confused on what they're whinging about. I don't know. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. That, that's exactly right. And I'm, I'm going to put some trust in the good people at Better Boating mm. Victoria because they're actually getting on with it. There well, you go. Done. Um, Cara, thanks for coming in. We've got you for the Thank rest you. of the year, which is going to be sure fantastic. <laughs> that's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, catch us every week live on Tuesday nights. We're here every week through to Christmas now. Not with No more breaks, OK? We had Melbourne Cup Day off. Uh, <laughs> but you can also catch Adam and I on Talking Fishing on 3MP if you want the real fishing reports every Saturday morning or get the 3MP app. You can listen to us all the time on that. Uh, until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water uh, and enjoy your fishing. Just take a look and watch those fish jump on your hook. Just relax and take a time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking, fishing, talking, fishing. Nothing but fishing, we're talking, fishing. Talking, fishing, talking, fishing. Nothing but fishing, we're talking, fishing. We're talking, fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.